Hey guys, so an aircraft carrier is a class of military ships whose main striking power is its fleet of planes. They have a runway or other ways to help their planes take off and land, as well as enormous hangars inside the ships, technical service equipment, plane fuel, and equipment to control and assist flights. Aircraft carriers are like a full-scale military airport. Leading airstrike groups, these ships are highly maneuverable military units that let them quickly concentrate significant force on any point in the seas, which significantly increases the Navy's capabilities. It's no secret that the Americans are always busy preparing and improving their aircraft carriers. In today's video, you'll learn about all their new inventions implemented in their newest aircraft carriers, costing $13.5 billion, and what its competitors can boast of as well such as how the Chinese have once again decided to surprise everyone, or how the famous Syrian voyage ended for the only Russian aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, as well as how dangerous it is to be a pilot landing on an aircraft carrier. The HMS Queen Elizabeth is the headship class of the two newest British aircraft carriers. The ship was built in 2017 and it was ready for combat in 2020. The Queen's air wing is made of 40 F-35B Lightning II fighter bombers and Merlin helicopters, with potential to expand the number to 70. Moreover, the aircraft carrier can carry strike and heavy military transport helicopters, as well as convertible V-22 Ospreys. The base air wing is designed for 12 F-35Bs, a crew of about 700 and 300 more for the air wing. At full military operational capacity, the ship can hold up to 1,600 people. The Queen Elizabeth is 920 feet long, 240 feet wide, and displaces over 70,000 tons of water. The ship can reach speeds of 25 knots and has enough fuel for 10,000 miles or almost 300 days. The French Charles de Gaulle is a comparably modern nuclear-powered ship. It was commissioned by the French Navy in 2001 and is the current flagship of the French Navy. This is the only nuclear aircraft carrier built outside the US. The ship can carry over 40 planes and helicopters. The squad is made of 30 multifunctional Raphael fighters, as well as Hawkeye radio locating warning and helicopters, such as the SA-365F Dolphin and the A2-322 Cougar. So now let's look at the might of the Russian Navy. The Admiral Kuznetsov was commissioned hurriedly by the Russian Navy in 1991, about around the time the USSR collapsed. This military ship carries about 40 planes and helicopters, including the Su-33 and the MiG-39K, as well as various Ka-27 helicopter variations. The lack of catapults on the ship limits heavy strike planes from taking off. It's smaller than the American aircraft carriers, but carries more powerful offensive weaponry, making it more of an aircraft-carrying cruiser than aircraft carrier. Many people saw news about its brave journey to the coast of Syria in 2016. The unlucky admiral smoked so bad it almost became the reason for the Mediterranean's ecological collapse. People joked online calling it the aircraft carrier smoker and compared the cruiser to Icelandic volcanoes. Soon after arriving at its destination, the ship experienced another unfortunate event with one of its MiG-29Ks falling. When landing, both engines stopped working, making the plane crash and sink near the ship. Three weeks later, the Ministry of Defense confirmed the loss of another plane, an Su-33. When landing on the aircraft carrier, the arresting gear broke which is needed to stop the landing plane, so the fighter slid off the ship. Luckily, both pilots were able to eject and survive. For fairness, we must say that being a pilot on an aircraft carrier is an extremely dangerous profession. Landing on a moving ship isn't an easy task, and there are many accidents during landings. Only well-trained pilots are able to tackle this task. The biggest danger is in the final braking systems that can't handle huge loads. But the Russian flagship's problems didn't stop when it returned home. In October 2018, a floating PD-50 dry dock sank and damaged the aircraft carrier that was under repairs. Additionally, two cranes fell on the dock, creating a giant 13 by 16 foot hole. 
Then the ship caught fire exactly one year later during repairs. The fire was 3,229 square feet in size and was a level two risk. Human error and disruption in safety protocol caused the fire. The fire was put out by three fire squads as well as the Northern Fleet. It was quickly localized. After this incident, the American journal The National Interest called the Admiral Kuznetsov and other Soviet cruisers hunks of rust. The Admiral is currently in endless repairs and modernization. Liaoning, China Varyag was the second Kuznetsov class ship to set sail in Nikolev, which is in Ukraine. It was commissioned in 1985 and set sail in 1988. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the financing for the ship ceased. In the end, the 70% prepared ship was sold to China to seemingly build a floating casino, but the adventurous Chinese resumed and commanded the ship. Thus, the first Chinese aircraft carrier was made for the Chinese Navy and is called Liaoning. After remodeling, the Chinese ship lost all of its offensive heavy weaponry and now only carries defensive short-range weapons. The Liaoning can carry up to 50 planes and helicopters, and no one has heard about any problems with the ship. But China didn't stop there. They built another aircraft carrier called the Type 2, or Shangdong, made completely with Chinese production, and it was issued in 2019. The Shangdong looks like the Kisanov, but it is a completely different beast. Unlike the previous ship, the Shangdong can carry 70 planes and helicopters. Second, the Shangdong's ski ramp launch has a 12-degree angle compared to the previous 14-degree. It's perfect for launching Shenyang J-15 fighters. Third, it's new. But China didn't stop there. They are secretly building another real strike aircraft carrier, the Type 3, with 85,000 tons of water displacement. There are pictures online of the docks where it's being built. It will be a ship with an integrated electric engine, letting it use electromagnetic catapults. Naturally, it will provide the option for heavier and more powerful 5-gen fighters to take off, like the Shenyang J-20, which is looking very good for the aircraft carrier's tactical and technical characteristics. U.S. Aircraft Carriers Until recently, the U.S. used the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers with water displacement over 100,000 tons. In total, 10 of these aircraft carriers were made, three using the original design and seven using an improved one. They were the largest military ships of their time. With a nuclear power plant and a crew of 3,200 people, you could call them entire floating cities. They could carry 80 planes and helicopters, FA-18E and F Super Hornet fighter bombers, the Boeing EA-18G Growler Electromagnetic Warfare Planes, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Long Range Scout Planes, and MH-60R and MH-60S helicopters. The Nimitz class has an automized self-defense system for winged anti-ship missiles, thanks to the integration and coordination from the electromagnetic warfare systems. The runway is over 269,097 square feet in size. Imagine how many sailors you need to keep everything shipshape. Although a solid storm might clean everything quicker. Even today, they are considered some of the best. But as you know, good isn't good enough, and the Americans made a new class of aircraft carriers. The Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers. This class of multifunctional nuclear U.S. aircraft carriers has been under construction since 2009. They were made as an improved version of the Nimitz class and need 700 fewer men thanks to the high degree of automization. As a result, it lowers operational costs. Additionally, the new aircraft carriers use new technology and design ideas, including elements of stealth technology. Nine to 10 of these new aircraft carriers are expected to be built and they will be the most powerful and largest ships to have ever been built. They are expected to serve for the entire 21st century. Now, the whole design is the same as the Nimitz. The new aircraft carriers will have a small, revised island equipped with more automated and effective observation and control systems. It can carry up to 85 planes, helicopters, and UAVs. 
Now, compared to the Nimitz class, the Ford will be able to provide an increase of flights from 140 to 160 per day and up to 220 in crisis situations. We will note that the flight squad include the newest 5th gen F 35C fighter that the US Navy started using in 2019. Two new A 1B reactors were redesigned for the aircraft carrier and can produce up to 25% more electricity than the ones of the previous generation. It's the first nuclear reactor that doesn't require refueling for 50 years, which should be enough for the ship's entire lifespan. The ship is equipped with a new electromagnetic catapult from General Atomics based on their standard electric engine. It provides a smoother takeoff for military planes and avoids loads too intense when building aircraft. For anti-air defense, the ship is armed with ESSM missiles from Raytheon and two eight-container launching platforms armed with 32 missiles each. The close-range systems include RAM anti-air missiles. The ship will have a completed system of assembling and providing ammo and food with storages twice as tall. The aircraft carrier's ammo includes missiles, artillery shells, bombs, and air-to-land missiles for strike planes, and torpedoes and deep-sea bombs for anti-ship planes. The weapons come up from the arsenal to main points in the design thanks to rapid elevators. The first ship was officially included in the U.S. Navy on May 31, 2017. And the cost? Well, that was a little high. The price for the first three aircraft carriers came in at just about 42 billion, with a B, dollars. Now, as a rule, large ships move very slowly. However, the size of an aircraft carrier might be deceptive. They're actually some of the fastest military ships, since the speed of launching planes to their destination carries immense weight. But you won't see them moving at their max speed in the open sea often. In combat conditions or while sailing, they stay in groups. So you only see them moving all out in tests. The max speed of the Nimitz is secret. According to official sources, it's over 30 knots, which is quite fast. In several press releases, they said testing showed 35 knots, and some unofficial sources and other authors say it can move for at least 8 hours at a speed of 42 knots. Videos of the Abraham Lincoln Nimitz-class aircraft carrier drifting appeared on social media. The ship underwent extreme repairs and a reactor refueling procedure, and the ship turned at full speed in the Atlantic Ocean. It's quite a sight to see. As far as the Ford class goes, they're even faster and more maneuverable. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like and a comment if you learned something, and uh, we'll see you again next time.